Hey, what's up guys? Totally Dubbed here and today I'm going to give you a hopefully quick uh, overview and um, overclocking guide for the Cunix QX2710 Evolution 2. I bought this uh, monitor just um, about a week, less than a week ago, and it arrived just today. And I would like to thank ToastyX on Overclock.net or uh, ToastyX on 120Hz.net for providing this guide. So all credit goes down to him, it's not me at all, but I just thought to put it in a video format and a very clear and an easy way to understand. There's a big misconception with the overclocking guide and it's actually to do with the drivers and the patching of the drivers and, and, and whatnot. So I'm going to work through that. More so, I want you guys to check down in the description. All these links that I'm showing you right now are all going to be down in the description. What I'm going to do is include the download file that he's provided for the Cunix for the driver. Um, on my dev host account which is over here and I'm going to provide the clock patcher um, by ToastyX as well um, on my dev host account. The reason I'm doing that is just in case those files get taken down you guys still have a backup to have these so you guys can download it via my dev host account free no adverts or any crap like that and really fast download so make sure you get those really small files as well. So anyway those two files aside let's get on with this um, overclocking guide. So first and foremost, what you want to do is uh, make sure that you're going to be patching the driver. So you can see over on his um, overclocking guide over here, he, is, he says that you can use CRU, which is uh, for AMD, um, or you can use the NVIDIA um, control panel. And in my case, I'm going to use the NVIDIA control panel because I've got an NVIDIA, um, NVIDIA card. So what I did, first of all, is patch the actual thing. So over here you'll be able to download the NVIDIA Patcher 1.25 and you get two files. You want to hit the NVIDIA Patcher full and over here you will see, um, I'm going to just zoom in, that you're going to be able to see if you can patch them. What you're going to want to do is patch and as you can see mine are already patched. So there you go. Make sure uh, you patch them. So I'm just going to hit those files successful. There you go. There you go. It says usually found and you hit that and then file successfully patched and signed and if I opened it up again it says already patched so there you go so that's what you're gonna have to do first so you first do that and then after that in order to properly um, get your um, get your resolution up on your uh, on your NVIDIA control panel or on CRU for example you're gonna have to install the driver the right driver for the Cunix now this comes in a little folder and you've got a uh, INF file over here if you open it it looks something like this it's nothing special however what you need to do is go find your monitor in device manager so I'm just gonna put in device manager and I'm just gonna zoom in uh, so you guys can see a little bit more clearly. So you can see I've got monitors over here. So you're going to see monitors um, and you're going to have something generic PMP or something like that. What you want to do is update driver software. You click that, browse my computer for driver software, and then go let me pick, and then go have disk, and then go browse. And then you go and browse to your location, and the location in that respect is your, uh, in my in my respect, that is, sorry, is my desktop. So again, I'm just going to go to the desktop, go to the Cunix one, and there we go, and press OK. And you're going to say, this driver is not digitally signed, that's fine, you press Next, and then it says successfully updated your driver software. You're going to need to do that only once. Um, as pointed out, another member on Overclock.net, you're not going to have to do that every single time you install a driver. Um, so you're not going to have to do anything. However, the patching of the drivers, this patcher thing over here, you're going to have to do each time you install a new driver and make sure that you, uh, when you go into the uh, control panel, that you reset your uh, overclocked uh, profile. So once you've done these two steps, is officially when you can start um, uh, overclocking your monitor. And overclocking your monitor is very simple. Um, all it really requires, for example, if you're an NVIDIA user, you open up the uh, NVIDIA control panel, you press customize, and it comes up with create custom resolution. Once you click on that, you'll be able to see 96 hertz, uh, or 96, uh, sorry, 96 hertz, it's 96. And so you want to leave everything untouched. You don't want to touch anything else. As you see, progressive, interlaced, whatnot. Just leave everything. You just change this. So for example, if I go 120, it's going to change the value down here to 120. 
So you want to test how much your monitor can go. And I know for a fact my monitor doesn't run 120 hertz. So I'm going to hit test and you guys are going to be able to see loads of green lines. That means, nope, my monitor does not overclock to 120 hertz. So you cannot do that. So what you want to do is maybe start at 120 hertz and work your way backwards. So I went to 115. I was going to put 150 there. 115. And again, you can see green lines just appearing there, but not so much. So that means maybe I'm getting close. So then I went for 110. And I've already got a profile for that, so I can't set it. And 110. Bada bum works perfectly fine. So you might be like, oh, okay, cool, I'm overclocked to 110 hertz, everything works. No, not quite yet there, Padawan. You better check your um, refresh rate. Now to do this, you can open up um, a UFO test frame skipping. And as you can see, it does loads of little lines on this, and you might get stuttering or whatnot every now and then. That's that's kind of normal. But as you can see, it says 110 hertz, uh, 110. So it says valid. So it's a valid uh, refresh rate. Now the thing is, well, I'm going I'm to put it to 96 hertz so it stops doing that thing. It's to do with the browser more than anything. But I'm just going to do that, and then reopen it again. And so what it does is syncs it up and it says valid. Now when it says valid, that does not mean that it's actually validly overclocked yet again. What you're going to have to do is take a camera, i.e. this camera, or take, um, or take uh, a camera phone. Uh, I don't know why it's not, um, it's being a little bit of pain. But anyway, once you do that, what you want to do is then take a picture at a low ISO. So the ISO level I did is 100, which is the lowest I had on my camera or even on my camera phone. I highly suggest an actual camera. And then you take a picture and make sure you've got the right lines. Now, as you can see, it's just being a little bit of a pain right there. But what I want to try and show you is this is how it's going to look like. You can see 96 hertz, 90 FPS, 96 hertz, valid. Then I took a picture. When it takes the picture, you can see it's got a full line. You want to make sure there is a line with no gaps in it. If there's gaps in it, that means that it's not overclocked properly or it's not capable of it. That is called frame skipping. Frame skipping is when you've got the odd block missing and that doesn't actually mean that you've overclocked. That means that you've overclocked the monitor, but the actual refresh rate that it's showing is going to be skipping frames. What does skipping frames do? Well, every other frame might miss, meaning that if you're, for example, playing FPS games and high FPS games, uh, let's play Counter-Strike or Battlefield or whatever, it's going to be missing a frame and that means you might miss something. So that, in other words, means uh, not a proper overclock. So make sure you've got a proper line and you take a picture and take some time making sure that you validate your overclock. So as I said, you, ha you not only have to make sure that it works via NVIDIA control panel, but you also have to make sure it says valid over here. And do bear in mind that you might have some browser issues. That's just sometimes happens. Just reboot the PC and it should be fine. Then make sure you've got a straight line with no problems. So I just want to show you at 96 hertz, 100 hertz, 105 hertz, 115 hertz. So you remember I just said at the beginning of the video it didn't run 115 hertz. Well, it passed this, but when I closed the browser, I suddenly saw green lines, which I hadn't, meant, uh, I hadn't seen before whilst doing the test. So 115 hertz passed, but the green lines didn't allow it to. Now, some people might say, but that green lines, what are the green lines all about? Well, the green lines are two things. One, it could be that your monitor is not actually overclocking to, say, 120 hertz. Or it could be to do with your actual physical cable, your DVI-D cable. Your DVI-D cable, um, if it might be a better one, might be able to display those extra little um, hertz coming from your graphics card. This has been proven by some overclock members and disproven by others. It really depends, but a better DVI-D cable might, might, but not guaranteed, give you a better overclocking result because the signal is being transferred more seamlessly between the, the screen and your GPU. So do bear that in mind. So if you do not hit, say, 96 hertz, make sure you get another cable and try and see, and try and see over there. Now, why 96 hertz? Why have I set it to 96 hertz and not 110? It's actually to do with the frames per second that are displayed via videos. Videos online usually use 24 um, frames per second, and if you multiply that, it gets you to 96 hertz. So um, that's why 96 hertz is kind of the sweet spot for most people which are overclocking their monitor. And in all honesty, the difference between 96 hertz and say 110 hertz uh, might be very minimal, and more so to the point that 
you might your graphics card might not even output 110 frames per second anyway for certain games so you gotta bear that in mind so I chose 96 Hertz because I know it would be fine anyway guys hopefully this guide has helped I know I just stretched in the 10 minute mark and I, I really wanted to keep it short but I thought to cover everything and mention everything there if you like this guide make sure you like the video uh, make sure you check out the links in the description below yes below and make sure you subscribe and comment if you like the video anyway guys I've been totally dubbed and hopefully this has been helpful to you alright guys bye bye